Hey guys, today we're going to be connecting our ABB shunt trip breaker to our Batrium uh, Watchmon expansion board. This is a 300 amp breaker by ABB. Um, it's the S5 version, S5N to be specific, and it'll handle up to 600 volts DC. It comes with this trip coil, so when 24 volts DC or AC is applied across these two leads, um, it will disengage the breaker. So a little background about the reason why this isn't connected yet. My system is a 48 volt system, so coming in to the Batrium is between anywhere between it could be 40 to about 50 volts DC and the problem is that the trip coil on the ABB is 24 volts DC and additionally the rating on the Watchmon relays is 30 volts DC so I did have someone recommend I use a resistor on the 48 volts that would be safe to use with a 30 volt DC relay and still trip the 24 volt breaker but I didn't like that solution so I went out and purchased this Meanwell 24 volt uh, step down converter the input can be anywhere from 18 to 75 volts DC, and it outputs 24 volts at 2.5 amps. Because Meanwhile is an excellent brand name, it's from a reputable dealer, and it's not the typical Chinese stuff you'd buy in AliExpress. And because the Batrium and the Shun Trip is considered a safety device, you want to make sure the components powering it are of quality and aren't going to fail. So before I do anything... Alright, so before I was rudely interrupted by the inverter fan, I was saying that uh, I'm going to start by shutting off the power to the step down and the Watchmon. And that's currently done with this 10 amp breaker over here. So what we're going to do is connect one lead from the shunt trip um, to relay one on the Watchmon expansion board. And relay one is connected to pins 11 and 12. Those are the normal open terminals and once the relay is engaged they will close. So before I go any further the first thing I'm going to do is crimp a ferrule boot on this lead that's going to go into the Watchmon 4. And the ferrule boot just goes over the wire strands and keeps them solid, keeps the strands from coming out, and makes it a lot easier to connect the wire to the terminals. So your ferrule boot just goes over the strands like so, and push it down over the insulation, and then I've got a crimp tool, slide it in the appropriate slot, crimp it down, and there we have it, a perfect crimp. So the, so the first lead is going to go into pin number 12. So we ran into a slight dilemma here, and that is that the red ferrule boot that fits on the black lead from the shunt trip would not fit into the screw terminal on the Batrium. And unfortunately, the smaller orange ferrule, like I used down here, uh, will not fit on the black wire. So I had to install this wire without a ferrule. So now we're going to connect the 24 volt input to pin number 11. Now on our DC converter, there's four pins on the top. There's two negatives and two positives. Since I'm already using a pair of negative and positive for the power for the watch mount and the expansion board, I'm going to use the other pair of negative and positive to supply the relay. And I'm just going to install this uh, second pigtail on here and then put a wire nut across here. Now if you're watching this, you're probably wondering why I'm using a wire nut instead of just using one piece of wire straight across. Um, and the reason for that is I'm going to have a couple more of these relays connected soon in upcoming videos. Then I'm going to be using the switch other things in addition to the shunt trip. Um, and I'm going to need more positive outputs. I could use the one in, two out, uh, one in, three out splitters that go on the DIN rail, but uh, considering I already have a pile of these wire nuts, you know, I just didn't see it necessary to order those. That most likely will be a future upgrade. Uh, So the negative will go to the second lead of our shunt trip, again with a wire nut. So to review the wiring, we have the positive comes out of the DC converter, goes into pin 11 on the Watchmon extension board. Pin 11 is for relay 1, and then the positive comes back out of pin 12 and goes to the shunt trip breaker. The negative from the shunt trip breaker comes down in the box and goes directly to the negative on the DC converter. So with that being complete, we're going to go ahead and turn on our Batrium, and then we're going to go inside and configure the software. Alright, so to configure the settings for Relay 1, we're going to click the menu button and go to Control Logic. And the settings for the shunt trip will be configured under the Critical tab. So I'm going to click Edit, and you'll want, you'll want the mode set to Auto. And what we're going to do is set the conditions for which we want the shunt trip breaker to shut off. So I'm going to start by turning on the low cell volt. So I want to disable the breaker 
if any one pack falls below 2.75 volts. And you'll see on the right the actual, this is the current lowest pack, is 3.72 volts. In addition, I'll want to say the high cell voltage, if any pack goes above 4.20 volts, I consider that a fault condition and I want that to shut off as well. And again, the current highest pack is 3.79 volts. If you want, you can set uh, temperature controls. I don't want to worry about that. You can also set supply voltages to your watchmons. Um, delay transition, I'm going to set for 5 seconds. So what that means is the conditions you set over here have to be met for at least 5 seconds. So if the voltage falls to 2.75 volts for a split second while a you know compressor or a large inductive load is starting up, it will not trigger the shunt. The voltage has to fall below 2.75 volts and stay there for 5 seconds before the condition is met. In addition, I'm going to put the low system voltage at 42 volts and the high shunt voltage at uh, 59 volts is fine. These two are already set. And again, the current voltage is 52.56. I don't think either one of these conditions would ever be met considering uh, one of the conditions on the left would be met first, but this is just an extra safety net. Um, so I don't need to worry about the idle volt or any of the charging parameters, and I'll click Save. So now we have the condition set for which the batterium will go into critical fault mode. Now we need to tell it to engage Relay 1 when critical condition is met. To do that, we'll click on Menu and then go to Hardware, and we'll click on the Expansion tab. Click Edit. Make sure the template is set to the Watchmon and Expansion version you have. I have the Watchmon 4 with Expansion. And the settings on the left will be for controlling your various relays and outputs. For the shunt trip disconnect, I am using Relay 1, and I'm going to set that to Critical Fault. So I'm going to click Save. So now I'm going to go down to the battery shed and unplug one of my cell mons to show what will happen when a critical fault occurs. Now before I go ahead and test this shunt trip, I did shut off all of my PV inputs and my charge controllers, and I did switch my AC circuits back to grid because you don't want to continuously flip this breaker under load. I do believe it has a finite amount of times it can be flipped before they suggest you replace it. I don't know what that amount is, so I'm just going to do it under pretty much idle conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug a cell mon now. And we'll count to five. So we're about two, three, four, five. It shut off pretty fast, and that made quite a loud noise. Um, so you're going to have to pull this down to the off position. Again, it requires a lot of force. It's disengaged, and now you'll push it back up to on, and it's re-engaged. And now that the system is back on and the watchmon has started back up, I can go ahead and turn back on the charge controllers. as well as the inverter. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. And I feel a lot better now about running my system at lower voltages and lower states of charge, knowing this breaker will shut off when the system voltage gets too low. Uh, beforehand, I have been switching this system back to grid every time it got near 20% because I didn't want to risk gambling how low it was going to get overnight. Um, so yeah, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.